Good morning, pregame crew. It is Friday, January 6, 2023, 8.22 a.m. Eastern, 6.22 a.m. Mountain Time. Good morning and welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Today, we have non-farm payrolls in eight minutes. Eight minutes, and I would anticipate some volatility from those non-farm payrolls. We're anticipating 200,000. Remember, good news is bad news when it comes to jobs. Of course, as human beings, we want everyone who needs a job to have a job. But the fact that the job market has been running so hot is a measure of inflation. So if the jobs numbers comes in a little bit lower than expected, bad news, that's good for the market. That means that the FOMC efforts are working. So let's do an audio visual check. I'll officially get started in eight minutes. If you want to look here down at the right corner between now and then, I'm going to do a few chart requests, do an audio visual check and say hello to my best friends. Good morning. Thank you, Night Truck and Wave. Hi, Andre Joe. Hey, Nugget. Hey, Casey, Lisa, Bob. Ponzi Zombie. Hey, Train Man. Hey, Wave. Matthew, sure. Hey, Slevin and Topher. Beehawk, Ed. Hey, Kevin, Greg. Good morning, Tess. How are you? Morning. Hey, Keggers. Sure, Wave. Hey, Basque, Carlos. Night Truck, thank you for being here. Let's see what I can get to. Got a few chart requests in here today. All right, so let's look at silver. If you are interested in the levels for ES, so you can start plotting them before we have the non-farm payrolls, here are your levels. They're in the light gray over here. So if you want to screenshot that and start plotting them, if you trade ES or you trade any type of reaction to news or data, you can go ahead and just start plotting that. Now I'm going to get started with silver. The dollar has been super strong. Actually, I should start with that first. I always forget that. So dollar, we got a daily higher high. Weekly, we're making an attempt to get over the weekly 50 MA. Four hour is super strong. This I can't call this a rising wedge because we're getting followed through a rising wedge. You want to see it get tiny, higher highs and not a lot of follow through. This one's getting very nice highs. So dollar is super strong. RSI is overbought on the four hour in a weekly downtrend. So yes, I see what you're looking at, Matthew. Let me say that again. Dollar is in a weekly downtrend with four hour overbought is typically where we scout that weekly lower high. So now let's go look at silver. Silver has a potential four hour bear flag. A bear flag stays alive as long as we're below 23.785. Hourly, we're getting these tiny higher highs without a lot of follow through, which gives more validity to that bear flag on a higher time frame. So support 23.46, resistance 23.69. I think you could bottom fish a 2326, but just be ready to be or to be wrong because you're counter trend trading. I think it is logical to counter trend trade in this area due to dollar being overbought. Man, that was a pretty decent trade review, if I must say. All right, I guess complimenting yourself is not a way to start a show, but I'm just glad I'm coherent. Uh and thank y'all for putting up with me too. All right, Nat Gas is pretty beat up. We are down here at quarterly levels. Let me show you on the quarter. Right here, your support, your next support is 3536, and this morning we hit 352. We have a 352 level from July of last year. It has been quite the move to the downside. Four hour is barely oversold. You'd think it'd be more oversold. And daily is just now crossing oversold. Hourly continues to cool off with this 8 EMA overhead. 15 minute 8 EMA is totally suppressing price. And you can make a simple statement that I will not enter long until it can, Nat Gas can have a candle close above the 8 and 21 EMA on the 15 minute. You got to see an appetite for bulls to buy this ridiculous, crazy drop. And I say ridiculous in that I don't, I have no fundamental 
ridiculousness, I guess that's not the right word, this exaggerated move to the downside, bulls are showing no appetite to buy it. So you got to have friends with you on the trade. And I wrote down in my notes today, I guess I'm showing my notes. The market's going to go where it's going to go with as few pe people as possible, bucking them off along the way. I just view price as a bucking bull. It's just bucking and it's trying to get the bulls off right now. And as soon as it can get every bull just totally exasperated and frustrated and never want to see that gas again, then it'll bounce. It's because the, the market's going to go where it's going to go with as few people as possible, bucking them off along the way. Hola. Hi, Carlos. Intel, sure. Daily inside bar. Gap below to be aware of. Let's see, 2637. Yep, a gap below at 2707 just to be aware of. Has enough room for a daily high or low. Four hour got overbought and a weekly downtrend. Same thing I was saying for a dollar goes for Intel. We're looking for a weekly high or low. Four hour got overbought. It's a decent area to top fish that weekly lower high. Yeah, hit that like button. Okay, in two minutes we have data. Let me see if I went through all the chart requests. Good morning, Slacker, Rachel, Donald, Abram, Stephen. Hey, Mary, Mal, Michael, Andre, Bobo. You're welcome, Matthew. It's BA. Hey, Wiz. Hey, John. Yep, showing relative strength, but it's red this morning. I mean, I, there's just so many people. If I'm going to be a, a big bully and just try to counter trend trade, which is what trade counter trend trading is, is you're trying to be contrarian. If I want to be like a big old bully and try to short, I just don't want a short one that has the hourly EMAs below you. Like it's, yeah, this is a tough short and it's a tough long because you've been overbought. Four hour is still overbought. Daily's overbought. Okay, let's go look at ES. Let me say one thing before data comes out, if I can get it out quickly. New lows or highs are in, that are created and after hours are less reliable. Do you see that? They are less likely to hold. December 22nd low at 378850 was created at 11 p.m. at night Mountain Time. That is a very low confidence level that it's going to hold. So what I'm saying is the bears have all of the Momo this morning and I see one glimmer of hope and it's going to be here in Microsoft, Amazon, and NVDA. So I'll go over that in a minute. Oh, we got a bull reaction. Bull reaction to the numbers. Huge move. Huge. Two twenty three versus two sixty three. So they came in better than expected, but down forty thousand from the last time. So it looks like the market bulls are attempting to interpret that bullishly. We're already fifteen minute overbought on ES. That happened quickly. So let's watch this upper wick. Now the high of this reaction is the most important level of the day, 3874. It becomes the most important level. And remember, we've literally, and I mean literally, done nothing with this reaction. 3900 and 3800, we've been trapped inside it since December 19th. We've been in actually December 16th is when we entered this level and we've been trading sideways underneath the daily EMA since then. So yes, this is awesome and fun for the bulls, but they haven't accomplished a lot. And guess where we just ran into? The Great Wall of Louisiana, the hourly 50 EMA at the yellow right there. We ran into it and we're rejecting and we're getting a big upper wick. All right, now I'm going to go to my hope, hopium dealing. Let's see. I'm going to be a hopium dealer this morning. <clears throat> this is what I was looking at pre-market and I posted it in chat. Is I was looking at this possible little falling wedge, which that's a terrible draw there because that wasn't a lower low. We were getting these lower lows on Microsoft, Amazon. Do y'all see that 15 minute falling wedge look or 30 minute? Looks a little better on 30 minute. And NVDA. This had me 
slightly hopeful for market bulls if that could come to fruition. And I'll tell you why. Just a second. We um, lost the chat. Okay. Oh, did anyone put the, let me put the data here. All right. Now let me go back to my thought process. So NVIDIA, no, Microsoft, that's the one I wanted to talk about. Microsoft has not been below the weekly 200 MA in 11 years. I want you to look at that. We have not had a candle close below it. Now, if you go back, I mean, you're digging. You're really digging. And it's over in here. December of 2011 is the last time Microsoft lost the weekly 200 MA. And for perspective, we did, barely got a candle close below the 50 MA during COVID. All right, during the COVID low, we barely lost the 50 MA for one candle. So we're testing the 200 MA. This is major. Microsoft is the largest holding in QQQ. If we're gonna make a stand, the bulls gotta do, do it today, hold that weekly 200 MA and bounce. Daily is not oversold. Four hour is. So this little 15 minute falling wedge with Amazon, Nvidia and Microsoft with that coupled with that Microsoft weekly 200 MA, that was the hopium I've been dealing this morning. Mary, I think I've responded to you. Yeah, I have a hunch. Uh, I Nope, where did I say it? Microsoft may hold a key clue for us today. So that's what I posted on Twitter. If you want to follow me on Twitter, that'd be great, at Lori. And this is good a time as any to get this show started. So I'm going to officially start at 634, four minutes after. If I am with the chart guys, and you are at the pregame show, and I don't even know what I'm doing here. No, this is the pregame show. This is where I go over indices, commodities, crypto movers, and shakers of the day. I have my notes. I share those notes with the TCG members when I'm done with this show so they can slice and dice them if needed. Hang Seng is down 0.29%. That's pretty flat. And DAX was flat last time I looked. All right. DAX is still pretty flat, 0.09. So really flat around the horn. I think everyone was waiting for this data to see if it's going to come in hot or cold. And all we've done nothing with this move. Look at that. We, I guess you could say we accomplished a lot because we got a four hour higher high. But is that really an accomplishment when you're still stuck inside the range you've been inside for 13 days? We'll see what the bulls can do with this. We did not break 381450 on the low of the reaction, 3819. And now we have a huge range going into today. Let's measure how much did we give up. We gave up 65% of that move up. Do y'all see that? Now, what does that mean? On the next bounce, bears can look to top fish 38.74 and bulls could look to bottom fish 3820, 3819. Again, much ado about nothing. And let me back up and kind of reset from where we started the weekend on Tuesday. Tuesday, we woke up here, here, yep. And we broke over resistance. Do y'all remember that? And we were like, yes, broke resistance. Then we went to RTY. RTY broke resistance. Do y'all remember that? YM. YM broke resistance, and then who didn't do it? Who was the big stick in the mud that could not break resistance? NASDAQ. And NASDAQ has kept us range bound for four days now. And now let's go look at ES without all my drawings, and let's reset what we've said every single day this week. We are still in a potential bear flag as long as we remain below 39.38. So do y'all see that higher high is actually pretty problematic for ES? A higher high without follow through when you're below the 0.382 in this type of pullback, you're setting yourself up for a bear flag. Well, NASDAQ is even worse. NASDAQ 
couldn't even get through that high of 118375 of the last week of 22. RTY. See how we broke bull from a weekly inside bar and they came right back down inside it because of NASDAQ weakness and NASDAQ's leadership. NASDAQ, they've been rotating out of that. I mean, they've been getting rid of NASDAQ and tech companies, but heck, it's still 25% in the market. You see that weekly inside bar bull break and right back down inside? That is not very encouraging for market bulls. So then we go here to the table. All right, so the table, we have 104 points at the time that I did this a couple hours ago were with points in favor of the bears. This is a communication tool. This is how I translate my thoughts. Pretend like I'm speaking English, which that's kind of questionable, and you speak Spanish. This is my translator tool so I can explain to you how I'm looking at the market a little more objectively than I could if I didn't have this table. And these weightings are arbitrary. I realize that uh, they're based on my trading experience and how I view correlation. So overall, Definitely everything's lining up for the bears except for Microsoft. Microsoft to me is a, a glimmer of hope for market bulls and Bitcoin rolling over in the middle of the night is even more fuel for market bears. Y'all see that? Overnight, Bitcoin was much weaker than the market. Speaking of where we started Monday, do y'all remember what I opened up with Monday with Bitcoin? Every time I've been looking at it for weeks, it's 16,700. And if I could sell an iron condor, I would. If y'all can tell me how to sell them, which broker I can sell them on that's reputable, please. Guess what? It's 16,700. Oh, I can't make this stuff up. I love technical analysis. Okay. Did we go over everything we need to here? Yep. All right, so let's make sure we've gone over the key levels. I've set the stage, now let's go over levels. The high of the reaction, of course, and the low of the reaction. Do you see how NASDAQ created a new low on that reaction? Wait, did it? Or before the reaction? Before, it created a new low. And ES, it's more of a double bottom at 38, 20, 38, 22. Again, NASDAQ leading the way down. Apple and Tesla are super weak this morning, weighing on the market. NASDAQ, th those are your levels, 10751 and resistance 10949, 200 point range. And in theory, in theory, we could stay within this range all day long. RTY, stronger. Support 1759. And resistance, the high of the reaction, 1785. Dow, resistance, 33331. Support, 33032. 300 point range. VIX is not telling me a lot at all. U.S. 10 year. <laughs> I know, Mary, I didn't give you a lot of green, did I? I, I just said Microsoft could be the wrench. At just Microsoft, that's the only one that I'm seeing that could help the market with that weekly 200 MA. So we have an EQ forming on US 10-year. I can't glean a lot of information. Let me make sure I didn't check anything off on that. Nope, I didn't because I couldn't. It was in the middle of a range. I didn't think it gave us data. If I don't have anything checked, that just means that it was a push. Can you tell I lived in a casino town for a bit? It's a push. All right, Bitcoin. Hourly lower high anticipated compared to 16805. Wait. Yeah, 16805. Bulls are trying to bounce here. Hourly EMAs are overhead. As long as that's the case, bears are in charge. Same thing for Ethereum. Key resistance now is... 1249.83, let's call that 12.50 and support 12.34.20. It rolled over overnight where the market was holding up a little bit better and ETH and Bitcoin were much, much weaker. Bitcoin's trying to bounce, excuse me, gold is trying to bounce. I'm assuming the dollar's pulling back, yes. 
So now that makes sense. Does that, so when the first question I was asked this morning was about silver and I led with the dollar, weekly lower high, the more likely scenario, four hour overbought. So having that dollar come in here totally makes sense and is helping gold. It is rejecting here at the hourly 50 MA, support 1839 and 1837. A four hour lower high is still the more likely scenario compared to 1864 and you have support at 1829. So don't lose sight of the most likely scenario. And if you had to have a new year's resolution related to trading, I would say your number one resolution should be probabilities, measuring probabilities in your head, even if it's just on the four hour, and the daily, at least two higher time frames. What's the more likely scenario? And base your trades on shorter term time frames based on those higher time frame probabilities. That's probably the biggest sentence I've said all morning. And if you could stop and rewind that and get that tattooed on your forehead, you're going to have a great year of trading. And if you could hit that like button, we have almost 300 of you and only 79 likes. Yeah, now the market's moving up a little bit more. All right. Oil. Oil's pop, popping a little bit, trying to get a little momentum on this dollar pullback. This had this diamond look. I guess it's better on the four hour. It had a diamond bullish reversal pattern look on the four hour, but it wasn't textbook. You can see it there, though. Over $75, this pattern confirms. But what are we really looking at? A daily lower high, anything below 75.91 keeps a potential daily bear flag alive. Oh, if you didn't watch Dan's video last night, shame on you. He, he shared something I've never heard him explain that way that was so good about bull flags and bear flags. How many candles does a bear flag or a bull flag make? And he says it doesn't matter because you can always shore it up on a higher time frame and have that same price pattern play out. So I thought that the way he explained it was amazing. I highly recommend you watch that. Okay, XLE, I was looking for first hour overbought. Looking for that daily lower high. So hourly is approaching overbought. We're not quite there yet. I'd set my alert at 67. So that's how I use alerts, by the way. All right. So oil is getting over resistance of 74.37. We're breaking that. 74.74 is your next resistance on the hourly. Bulls are trying to get something going here over the hourly 50 MA. I'm assuming you meant Dan is top notch. Yes, he is. Okay. Nat gas. I've already said all the bad things I can say about it. It's trying to pop here on the dollar weakness. Let's see if a temporary low is put in at that quarterly support of 352. It's possible. You could look to buy a 15 minute higher low compared to 352 high risk of getting stopped out. Apple. Apple is bouncing. Something interesting happened with Apple. Those inside bars can be tricky, tricky. We had an inside bar yesterday, excuse me, Wednesday. Yesterday, we broke that inside bar bearish, but we didn't take out the mother bar. Do you see that? The mother bar support remained intact. So 125.08 was the inside bar support, and then the mother bar was 12417. We held that. When you have two supports or two resistances very close by, they need to take them out in rapid succession like this or they have a high probability of turning around because the bears could, were supposed to shoot their shot yesterday and take out both at once and they were unable to. So bulls now have a platform to make a stand. Does that make sense? This is making so much sense to me this morning. I don't know if it's because I had my athletic greens and I'm back on my athletic greens kick or if I'm really nailing it today. We'll see. Running into the hourly 50 MA. I think the bears are in a slight world of hurt. 
I wanted to go see. This is where I had my epiphany right here almost an hour ago. Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon with potential 15 minute falling wedges. Those names get enough volume for those patterns to be valid. Microsoft hasn't lost the weekly 200 MA in over 11 years and four hour oversold with a weekly support left. And that is where I had my little epiphany. So let's see if we can keep it going with Apple 12704 and 12708. Are your next resistances support low of the morning 12440, which did not break that mother bar support of 12417 Amazon. There's your 15 minute falling wedge. Bull break your next resistance, 8421, 8427. So if you miss this pop, the next pullback, the next pullback is a buy on ES, in my opinion, on the market. The next pullback is a buy, and I mean even on the two or five minute. I love Athletic Greens. I think it's helping. All right, NVIDIA. You see it? Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Falling wedge, breaking bull. 144.78 is your intraday resistance. Looks like we got over that with that pop. We need to clear the, yesterday's high, 145.64. Do you see it? Daily inside bar. We broke bear yesterday, couldn't take out the mother bar. Now let's go back to what the crazy lady was saying at the very beginning of the show. The market is going to go where it's going to go with as few people as possible bucking them off along the way. Now, if this ain't the market bucking people off, saying, come on, get overly short here and we're going to crush you. Do you see it? Mother bar held 140.96. And I still, even though I'm saying I had a bull glimmer of hope to start the day, I still don't trust this low back here, and I'm going to carry that information forward. 378850, that low happened in after hours, and I'm saying it's not it's not as strong had it happened during regular trading hours. So I'm not saying it's game over for the bears. All right. Tesla. Tesla. Shorts are for, sh excuse me, bounces are for shorting until Tesla can shake off. It's as if it needs to take out $100 psychological before it can get a bounce going. $100 is a magnet for Tesla. It is an absolute magnet. Did we hit it this morning? No, 101.20. So $100 is a magnet for Tesla and a flush of that may bring out those last few sellers. So Tesla five minute, 15 minute overbought conditions are for shorting. Tesla reduced its prices over in China and that's affecting NIO, LI, and XBEV. Those three names are down because now Tesla represents a stronger competition for those three because their prices are cheaper, but it's bad for the bottom line and Tesla is feeling the effects. All right, now all my trades are busted. <laughs> CCL, I was looking at a potential top fish against the daily 50 MA at 902. That's not going to work now, so that's gone. Dow, we are looking for a weekly lower high compared to 36.88. I thought this top fish right here of 35.72 made sense since we hit 35.57. We came within 15 cents of that double top yesterday. So, I don't know that this trade idea will work. KMX is a go with trade, meaning I like this daily inside bar. And my thought was daily inside bar, 50 MA overhead, go with trade, meaning take the break in either direction. And y'all, it's my least favorite thing to do to get in front of y'all or to post in our chat room. Well, if it's bullish, look for 64, 65, 66. If it's bearish, look for 62, 61, 60. I think that's garbage. That is not my... MO. With this tight of an inside bar, I think you can take the break. And I think you should position, look to position yourself with the market. So the market's bullish now. So I'd look to position myself bullishly against 6281 as closely as possible, or just take the break of 6410. Javier, you make me smile. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. And then Microsoft 
that was my queen of the mountain trade. I think pullbacks are for buying on Microsoft today. Remember, it got the downgrade over here. Unfortunately, formed a four-hour bear flag. And yesterday, it was our queen of the mountain short here. So I'm not above shorting Microsoft. But I think here at this location, it's better to buy the dip versus short the rip on Microsoft. All right. Is there, let me make sure there's nothing else. Yeah, Tilray needs to get above $3 psychological, and it is in pre-market. It needs to hold above 302, and then your next resistance 305. And remember, somebody bought this top over here, and they're probably holding on at $300 even, saying one day, one day, I'll be able to sell it. You've got bag holders overhead in spades on these marijuana names, so be quick about it with your gains. All right, that's it for me. I'm going to just wrap it up here on this beautiful pr Friday. I'm so glad you're here. Hit the like button before you hit the exit door. Hit the notify, subscribe button. If you want to give me a follow on Twitter, at Lori, I would greatly appreciate it. And I thank you for being here. Use stop losses.